Now, the topic I'm going to cover today is going to be seen as heresy by many of your traditional SOC engineers, SOC managers. But the title of the seminar is The Future of Cybersecurity. So open your mind, broaden your horizons. All right. Now, I'm going to go through how Fortinet approaches this. That's not necessarily right or wrong. There's no cybersecurity company on this planet that has the silver bullet, right? There's no magic wand that we can wave, all right? Everyone's got their own approach. This is our approach. Now, as the good lady said earlier, malware is on the rise exponentially. It's getting more targeted, more sophisticated. The bad guys have got ransomware as a service, crime as a service, all right? This is, this is big business. It's becoming more targeted. You know, we see this on a regular basis. Now, your guys are going to play whack-a-mole to try to shut all these doors. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm talking about malware broadly, not just ransomware or you know, phishing scams, just as a broad thing. So not only do they have to deal with that, but many organizations, many businesses have got the overarching overhead of you know, new regulations that come in. So you've, whether it's GDPR, PCI, the finance industry has now got DORA, the Digital Operation Resilience Act. That's a lot of work. Now, if you couple that up with the limited number of cybersecurity skills that are out there, all right, great for me, keeps me in a job, not so great for you guys. Now, the net result means is that your SecOp teams are overloaded. So you have to ask yourself, is that still fit for purpose? Now, most SecOps use a cyclical model like this. You may use a different one. This is the NIST one, National Institute for uh, Security and Technology. But they all are on, a, on the same sort of theme, right? You prepare. So pre preparation is good. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail, right? Due diligence, hygiene, it's great. But then what starts to happen is something happens. You detect something. And then the SecOps teams, if they even notice the alerts on their dashboard, but let's assume they do, then they scroll around, start triaging. Then there's the flurry of emails going back and forth. Then there's an instant response program that's initiated. And then, and then, and then, and you know, there's more emails, and, you know, and finally there's a change control window. You're talking minutes to hours, sometimes even days I've seen. Time is simply not on your side. All right? And we see this on a regular basis. Here, I've chosen ransomware, but as I said, it's not just about that. There's many other conduits. Now, look at the names on this. Now, I didn't put them here. This is publicly available. You can go find this. I'm not picking on these organizations. But you have to ask yourself, these are massive organizations. You don't mean to tell me that they don't have all these processes and procedures and proper strong SOC methodologies in place that they don't spend millions on cybersecurity every year, that they can't afford to pay the best of breed cybersecurity specialists. So if all that's in place, then you have to ask yourself, well, how do you end up on a dashboard like this? And maybe here's the answer. It's not the how, or rather it's not the what, it's the how. It's not what you're using. Maybe it's the way you're using it, okay? Now, Gartner is saying we need to think outside the box. We need to change. We need to change from points of security to building secure networks versus networks with just security. If this lectern is your best of breed, whatever it is, firewall, whatever, IPS, and this room is your threat landscape, well, this can only see the threats that come to it. It can't do anything about the stuff that's elsewhere in the room, right? It's an island of security. What Amesh is talking about here is that everything starts working together as a homogeneous unit, sharing intelligence, working together to identify the threats as close to the threat as possible. Now, Gartner has been talking about this since October 21. Fortinet have been delivering this since 2015, even before, but it's 2015 that we started selling what we call our fabric. So Fortinet have got a very large product portfolio, but it's not about just having many components, all right? Because then you're just like a, a circus juggler, juggling many things, right? That, that doesn't mean that they work together. Our fabric shares intelligence. It works together. Everything is talking to everything else. It's like a military campaign, right? You've got the Air Force, you've got the Navy, you've got the Army. They don't work in isolation, they work together. And the fundamental root of that is intelligence. The good lady before said, 
you know, she was talking about their intelligence. Every cyber security organization has got an intelligence. For our intelligence engine, it's our 40 guard labs. We've got web bots, web crawlers, researchers, uh, probes, you know, uh, honeypots, all sorts of stuff. We've also sold more security appliances than all our competitors combined. Now, that's not just great for headline sales figures. Almost every single one of those components shares information with our cloud. The customers can turn that off, all right, if they so choose, but most choose to leave it on. Sends anonymous information to our cloud. So in addition to our real-time intelligence that we're gathering, these probes are working like grid networking. They're feeding input into our cloud. So we marry up the real-time intelligence with the trends that these products are seeing. And that allows us to see when campaigns are kicking off. We were the very first organization to detect the Mirai botnet back, I think it was 2016. All right? We saw that because we had all these probes feeding, well, what's happening? What's all this stuff? There's never been a successful military campaign in the world that hasn't relied on real-time intelligence. And here's the thing, real-time intelligence versus information. If you don't use the intelligence in the here and now, it becomes information. You might as well just go into a library because a library is full of information, but what good is it for you sitting on a shelf? Now, what we do is we distribute that real-time intelligence. We send it to all our products simultaneously. I'm not just talking firewalls. 14 as I said, do way more than firewalls. And again, this is just the way we do it. I'm not say, saying it's right or it's wrong. It's the way we do it. We distribute that to all our components, including our SOC components. Now, what happens it's when something happens at the edge, like here we've got a command and control, a botnet has launched a command and control channel, it wants to talk back to the bot herder, we've got a CCTV camera here that should only be speaking to the network video recorder, but all of a sudden it starts talking to some server across the world. All right, well, that's a behavioral anomaly. What our fabric does is it detects that in real time. It blocks that as close to the threat as possible, and then simultaneously sends the logs to the SOC. But now, those logs are used as a learning exercise. It's not telling the SOC engineers, oh, scurry around, you know, initiate the incident response, blah, 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 that takes the human intervention, takes time, hours, and whatever. It's now saying, this is what the fabric has dealt with. Now use it as a learning curve. Why is Mary from the Edinburgh office constantly clicking on those betting links, which is you know, bringing the bad stuff into the network? Maybe she needs more education, more training, and so forth, right? Now, you'd say, yeah, of course you're going to say that because you want us to throw away everything we've got right now and replace it with your equipment. No, we're not naive. We're about augmenting what you've got today, all right? Helping you build a secure network versus just simply a network with security. We have a massive fabric partnership. We work, it's actually more than 300, it's over 480 at the moment. We work with many of the names you see here. You think, well, certainly, surely you compete with them. Yes, we do, but we're also growing up. And we realize that if you've got those in your, in your environment, we need to work with those to help you bolster your security. So if we now look at a multi or a heterogeneous environment where you may have some of our components and another vendors, well, our fabric will deal with the stuff at the edge. But maybe you've got a cloud instance, right? You've got a workload in the cloud. All of a sudden, another vendor's equipment that you're using in the cloud detects something happening there. Here, crypto mining channel, all right? So what it does is it sends the log to our SIM. Our SOC then identifies where it's come from, the type of equipment, the vendor's product that sent it to it, and it automatically initiates a playbook based on those parameters and sends the remediation script down to that endpoint to take that off the network. Again, automation. Remember what I said in the beginning? The bad guys are using automation. They're using artificial intelligence. We need to do the same. But now, some times, your organizations don't want this, or they don't want things just taken off the network, right? If you're a nuclear power station, you don't want something just taken off. With case, Bill, why has it gone so quiet in here, right? It's not a good thing in certain environments. So they still want that human intervention. So now all the logs still go in the traditional fashion up to the SOC. The SOC engineer looks at this, and he says, hey, you know what? I'm seeing some malicious traffic from that user and from this, uh, this cloud stuff. But in actual fact, that CCTV camera, I know what that is. It's a false positive because actually we've spun up a new instance in the cloud and it's communicating with that. 
Now he presses the button, initiates the playbook. The playbook then goes off and initiates the dynamic threat mitigation on the endpoints, knowing full well that the camera is a false positive. Now maybe you think, okay, that's great, Fortinet. You've got your threat intelligence. It's great. You've told us how expansive it is and how real time it is. But in actual fact, we've got our own sources of truth that we trust as well. We've used it for years. No problem. It's great. Bring them along. The more, the merrier. More to the party, the better the party, right? So we'll take those feeds. It can come in email, web, whatever cyber threat integration, taxi, whatever method you use. We'll take it. We'll subsume it. We'll contextualize it. The, the lady before me, sorry, I've forgotten your name, um, spoke about context. Everything's got to be in context. You've got to contextualize everything. So we contextualize that. We create these things called indicators, and we push them out um, not only to our own products, but if there's other products down there as well, to, again, take that real-time intelligence as close to the edge as possible. So now we're moving this thing from a, to a, a detect, respond dynamically, and then protect. Protect being the learning curve, you know, the cyclical uh, process. So in summary, you know, as I said, the bad guys are moving at lightning speed. Malware spreads in milliseconds. The human way of doing things is simply not fit for purpose anymore. I mean, by all means, carry on down that route if you're happy with it, but from what we're seeing, it's no longer fit for purpose. We've got to bring in AI, machine learning, and automation. And if I briefly go back to that NIST model, imagine that, if I was to draw an analogy, that's your house, right? Your preparation is you go around at night before you go to bed, you close the windows, you make sure the doors are locked, you switch on the alarm. In the middle of the night, the wealth redistribution executive comes and he puts a brick through your window, all right? It's only halfway into your uh, kitchen, wherever his entry point is, that he triggers the alarm. The alarm goes off, you wake up, you scurry down, you find the window that's broken, you look at the glass in the floor, you following the foot trap. Meanwhile, he's already in the lounge, he's unplugged your TV, he's thrown a brick through your uh, lounge window, and by the time you get to the lounge, he's already over the fence carrying the window. All right? It's closing the gate after the horse has already bolted. Now imagine you had a Rottweiler in the house. Chances are he would have only gotten a foot through the window, the initial window, before it got chewed off and your house would have been protected. All right? And that Rottweiler is the artificial intelligence. So I know that was very quick, but I was on a tight schedule. So thank you very much. <laughs>